Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. The first thing we do is enter the financial information into my discounted cash flow model. We then add the company's debt and equity details to figure out the discount rate. Finally, we determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. We then look at the financial ratios and compare them to its competitors. I'm going to walk you through the entire process so you can do it on your own after watching this video. Make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions. The company we're going to look at is Chemtrade Logistics and Chemtrade is one of the largest suppliers of sulfuric acid and many other chemicals. They're located in Canada and let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 483 spot 4 million Canadian dollars. And let's see what they're trading at. They're trading at $5.22. That's one share of stock. And they have a 11.5% dividend payment. That's a huge dividend payment. This is a Canadian stock. It trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. They also trade in the pink sheets. So if you're in the US and you want a stock with a high dividend, a high yield, you can look at this one. Let's get the free cash flows. That's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows. Then you discount that number back to today's value. And you can see each year they have positive free cash flows. So that means they're generating more cash than they're spending. Just to show you how you calculate cash flows, it's cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And you start with the net income. So you can see in three of the four years they had negative net income. But all four years they had positive free cash flows because you add back non-cash items. Each year they had lots of depreciation that they used as an expense on the income statement which brings down their net income to negative. But you have to add that back because it's not actual cash that goes out of the business. Let's pull their net income. This is the profit and loss on the income statement. And we're going to put four years of that into the model. And then let's get the revenue which are the sales for each year. We'll put that into the model. You can see the sales went up. 50% from 2016 to 2019. So that's really good. Although it did drop from 2018 to 2019. But you could look on a quarterly basis and in the first quarter of 2020 they had $366 million of sales. So it looks like they're on track to at least match their 2019 revenue number. Let's look at the numbers in more detail. Because as I said earlier, they do have negative net income pretty often, but positive free cash flow and cash is king. So you always want to look at the free cash flow. That's how you grow a business. Let's look at the capital structure of the company so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay 78 million of interest on their debt. And that's on the income statement. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liabilities section. Current debt of 75 million, that's debt due within 12 months. Long term debt of 1.3 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. They pay 5.8% interest on their debt. They don't pay taxes according to their income statement, probably because they don't make much income. Let's get the beta of the company, that's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a beta of 1.53, so the stock moves about one and a half times the Canadian market. Let's get their current assets because we need to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. And that's $500 million. Let's see what's cash of $13 million. Net receivables $155 million. Net receivables are all your accounts receivables minus the accounts receivables you don't expect to receive. And they also have 122 million of inventory. So you could notice these numbers don't equal 500 million because Yahoo Finance doesn't have all the details. We'd have to go to the actual financials to get all the information. Let's get their current liabilities. This is how much money the company owes within the next 12 months. That's 370 million. And current liabilities is made up of current debt of 75 million, accounts payable. This is how much money. The company owes to its creditors and suppliers 135 million and other current liabilities 19 million which we don't know what that is but that's usually smaller items that don't meet the criteria of getting their own line item. 
Let's get the stockholders equity. That's assets minus liabilities. That's almost 800 million. Let's see what that is. That's negative 870 million of retained earnings. Retained earnings is all the previous year's net incomes minus all the previous year's dividends. So you generally want to see a company with positive retained earnings because that means they've been operating profitably in the past. They pay such a high dividend, so that's probably why they have negative retained earnings. Accumulated other comprehensive income of 158 million. This is unrealized gains or losses on their investments. Unrealized means they haven't realized the gain or loss. In this case, it's a gain. When you realize it, that means you sold it. So like if you own stock and you bought it for $1,000 and the stock is now worth $2,000, that's an unrealized gain of $1,000. You didn't make any money until you actually sell the stock, then you realized it. So if they do sell these securities, then they'll have to pass the gain onto the income statement. This is just information for the investors to figure out how the company is doing. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income. That's 1.7 million negative. So that means they're losing $1.7 million on an operational business. Let's see the capital structure. The cost of debt is 5.8%. The weight of debt is 64%. Cost of equity is 14%, weight of equity is 36%, and the WAC is 8.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. And we got these numbers by using the prior financial information. That's how we figured these numbers out. And then the cash flows, we had a discount back to today's dollars, and we discounted them using the weighted average cost of capital. And if you sum these numbers up, that's a value of the company according to the model, and that's $918 million. We divide that by 93 million shares, and we get an intrinsic stock price of $10. They're trading at $5, so it's trading at a 47% discount. So it's definitely a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 938. They're almost exactly where I'm at. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. So they were trading much higher a few years ago, but they keep dropping. So investors are just not willing to pay $10, $15 for a share of stock for this company. They're willing to pay $5 at this point. It seems like there's value there in the stock. It's just investors don't feel the same way as I do. Let's look at the financial ratios, see if we get more information. They have a negative PE. They have great price to sales and great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. Earnings per share is calculated by taking net income divided by shares outstanding. They have negative net income, therefore they have negative PE. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. And this is a great ratio. A price to sales below one indicates an amazing value. So they are providing tons of revenue for the stock price. Now they have to do a little better job at converting that revenue to earnings. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. And this is a really good ratio also. Below one is considered a great value. This indicates an $8.20 book value per share, which means if the company went bankrupt today, they would be able to give each shareholder $8.20, providing them a pretty good return. Obviously, the company's not going to go bankrupt to pay each shareholder a good return, and that's also theoretical. That assumes a balance sheet you can get what the assets are worth. But it does provide a good indication that they have a solid balance sheet and possibly a really good future. Let's look at the current ratio that's really good. Bad ROE because it's negative and they have no interest coverage. So current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities, which is great. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, therefore they have negative ROE. And they cannot cover their interest payments because they have negative EBIT. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Grace and Lionel Bassell. And this is Chemtrade right here. If their number's in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So PE, they're obviously worse than the average because they're negative. Lyondell has the best PE. 
But in terms of price of sales and price of book, they are the best, which is good to see. They're worse than the average and current ratio and ROE. They're in the middle of debt. All companies are a little leveraged. Grace is the most leveraged. Chemtrade is a really small company. When I convert them to US dollars, there's only $363 million compared to these other billion dollar companies. So that is a risk, but greater risk, greater reward. Thanks for watching.